Looking for some new Corset 2021 cards? Well, you can get them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom. Card Kingdom has Corset 2021 up for pre-sale now, and you can check it out over at CardKingdom.com. Hello everyone, and welcome to a super special video. I'm Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and over the next few days, in the past few days, we have been talking about the best Core Set 2021 cards for various constructed formats, and today... We're talking Pioneer, top 10 Pioneer cards from Corset 2021. And joining us is Krim. How's it going today, Krim? Great. I love, I, you know what? I still love Pioneer, so I'm really excited to talk about the new Core 21 cards. I am super happy to have you here to talk Pioneer because I think you've been playing more Pioneer than me lately. I've gotten a little bit of the like historic fever and I played a lot, ah. a lot more historic recently and less Pioneer. I've still played some though and I'll probably play some more to test out these new cards because we have some really sweet new cards entering the format from Corset 2021. Yeah, yeah, definitely do. Uh, like, I mean, I've definitely been on that same, like, you know, that same high there with uh, like a lot of, a lot of historic, a lot of Pioneer and, like and some standard thrown in. Anyway, Let's count down our top 10 cards from Corset 2021 for Pioneer. A quick reminder of a couple of things. One is, this is Krim and I's combined list. Uh, we each made a list individually, mashed them together for the top 10. If you want to see our individual list, check out the article linked in the description to this video. Also, uh, our rules for this countdown for the core set is reprints can be included, but only if they are new to the format. So, uh, for example, Azusa Lost But Seeking would qualify for our Pioneer list. Ugin the Spirit Dragon would not qualify for our Pioneer list because it's already been legal in Pioneer. So anyway, let's count them down. Starting at number 10 on our list, we have Spark Hunter Masticor. So Grim, uh, what do you want to do with this three drop in the Pioneer format? Uh, you know, with, with how many Planeswalkers are actually running around in Pioneer, like I think this card's pretty sweet, right? I mean, it, it like you have Gideons and this can like swing into the Gideon, uh, like Gideon of the Trials, that is. And, you know, like, there's the Super Friends decks, like the Jeskai Super Friends, and you can pick off, like, Teferis, Narsets, just all the Planeswalkers that are running around right now. Uh, this is just a solid card out of the sideboard. And as I had mentioned, like, in the standard video, where the fact that this is a colorless uh, creature means that you can play it in any deck. And it curves out perfectly, uh, like you had mentioned, actually, where... You've seen a lot of the Land of War Elf decks or even even like the mono green, uh, like, you know, mid range slash super friends deck where you can go Land of War Elves into a three drop. And this kind of curves out perfectly for you. Yeah, I think that's that's the main reason. Uh, one of the main reasons I really like Spike Herder Masticor is there's a lot of value of that curve. I think just one drop into three drop. And as you mentioned, there are a ton of Planeswalkers running around. Planeswalkers are pretty heavily played in the format to fairies, Narsets, Jaces out of the inverter list. This is a good option that is also just a pretty resilient creature. Sure, you got to discard a card when you cast it, which is a downside, but it dodges a decent an amount of removal having four toughness uh, it has three power so at least they have to like revolt their fatal push or whatever so i think spark hunter Mazagor can do some uh, sweet things as like a solid mid-range threat in the format that is also a great answer to planeswalkers yeah yeah and it also is able to give itself indestructible and which is still relevant. So, I mean, you're able to, like, get around a fatal push eventually. Yeah, the, the mana cost uh, on the indestructibility, slightly it's a lot. high. But, I mean, if you don't have anything else going on, it is a nice little bonus. Yeah. Well, let's move on to number nine on our list. We have a, a tribal card, a spirit in Shackle, guys. So spirits is a tribe that has kind of been up and down, I would say, in the Pioneer format. I think there was a time when they were like the best deck in yep. the format. Now they're more, uh, I think, second tier tribe, but... Getting more support is uh, sometimes exactly what a second tier tribe needs, and being an answer to big creatures by tapping down your spirit seems like a nice bonus. What do you think about Shacklegeist in Pioneer, Grim? Well, so I like this, like the question is like, do you like this more than Nebelgast, right? Because, but Nebelgast is three mana, but it has flash. This, however, and it also can block whatever, this can only block other creatures with flying. And, and of course, the, the, tr and when it enters the battlefield, it doesn't do anything. But the trade off is that you can, you don't have to like tap this or anything like that, wait a turn for it to like get away from summoning sickness. You can just tap two spirits and tap target creature you don't control. So I think that's pretty big. And the fact that this is two mana. So if you get a rattle chains or whatever, this just is, is a better nebble gas, right? Yeah. I, I think, uh, it, it, it's very similar. And the thing I like about it compared to nebble is nebble uh, triggers when a spirit comes into play. Uh, this 
even if you're out of spirits, you can still use it if you need to by just tapping the spirits you have on the battlefield. And while tapping two spirits might sound like a lot when you consider that uh, one of them can be Shacklegeist itself, it's Correct. not actually as, uh, as hard as it sounds. It's not like tap it and two other spirits. What do you think about the future of the spirit tribe? Like, is this enough to... Uh, to move it up a tier in the format, you think? Or do you think it's still, at this point, going to be kind of tier two range? I, I think that Spirits is devi- definitely, like, probably one of the better, like, if not the best tribe in Pioneer. Uh, but, like, I do think that this card does work. It definitely helps uh, give it a little more power. Uh, the thing here is, I, th- you know, can you slow down decks like Lotus Breach? Obviously, this isn't going to be a factor there, right? Like, this this is a non-factor. They have, like, what, one two one that cycles and the Fae of Wishes. So, this is kind of irrelevant in that matchup, but I think that you did struggle against a few of the decks, like, going a little bit faster than you. Like, maybe, let's just say, like, Mono Black Aggro, and this could be all the tempo that you need, right? Because, like, sometimes you just die by a turn. And I think this is good enough to help you fight other creature decks. Yeah, I mean, being able to tap down, like, the creature that has a soul artifact on yeah. it. Or an Uro that's going to attack and draw a card and gain life, which are right. pretty common things that you're going to run into in Pioneer. Uh, that is pretty powerful, and that's something that the Spirit Stack, I mean, it kind of has with Nibblegast Herald. But I really like that this is a, a more permanent version of the effect that doesn't depend on you. Uh, being able to flash in a spirit, having three mana up for Nibble Gas. And this, you could just turn one Mausoleum Wander, turn two Shackle Guys, and start tapping your stuff to keep things in check. So I, yeah. I think this card actually has a lot of potential uh, in the Spirits deck in Pioneer. Correct. Because, like, the Spirits deck doesn't run a ton of removal, and on top of that, you can Coco into this, and then use the two spirits that come into play, right? Yeah, you can. And that's true. The spirit stack actually doesn't really run removal, period, for the most part in the main deck outside of spirits itself. So getting another on tribe spirit and a 2 2 flying for two is pretty decent. Like that's yeah. relatively on curve for a flyer, especially once you start stacking up Supreme Phantoms, Empyrean Eagles. All of a sudden, this is hitting for four or something on turn four, which is a pretty legit threat in the air. Yeah, like it, it like this, this card is just solid, I think, in that deck. And like for it's either, I, I think it makes its uh, way into the 75. Somewhere in the 75, but I I think that it's definitely main deckable because you don't run removal like I had mentioned. Well, let's move on to number eight on our list. And this is a this is my sleeper pick, apparently, from Corset 2021. <laughs> I talked about it in Standard. I'm going to talk about it again in Pioneer. I'm a fan of Demonic Embrace. My argument for Demonic Embrace in Pioneer in specific is, even though it's not quite to where it was a little while ago, right after Lurus released, uh, Black White Sram Auras is... A legitimate deck in the format, and this seems to fit right in with what that deck is trying to do. In the past, before the companion nerf, this probably would be a non-starter, because uh, you want to have Luris as your companion, but in the current world, where Luris costs three extra mana to put in your hand, I think that maybe there's an argument to just curving out, like playing your uh, LC of Life's Bounty, turn two, you can slam your All That Glitters, turn three, you can put this on it, and you're hitting for a massive chunk of damage in the air, plus you have Sram in the format, so you're going to be drawing extra cards along the way as well. If your creature dies, you trigger your Hateful Eidolons, and you can recast Demonic and Base from the Graveyard. So while I don't think it's going to revolutionize the format, I do think this is of a power level that is playable in the Pioneer format. I think this is definitely more justifiable in Pioneer. Even though those Aura decks do like Lurus, even with the new update on the companion mechanic, they do like Lurus, so you won't be able to play that. However, being able to like cast this from your graveyard and like like Griff's Boon, stuff like that, and uh like Sentinel's Eyes, that now gives you three enchantment auras that allow you to play from the graveyard. And I think that's very good for the deck. So this makes a lot more sense in Pioneer, at least to me, than it does in Standard. So you could be right on this one. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> well, speaking of could be right, now it's your turn, Krim. Moving on to number seven on our list. We have one of uh, one of Krim's specials, the cards that I'm not as high on as you are. We talked about this one in Standard, too. Azusa Lost But Seeking. Uh, what are you envisioning for our extra land drop creature in the Pioneer format? Lotus Breach. <laughs> Like this is got like, oh, the, like oh. if if Lotus Breach doesn't get banned, of course, or something from it, and the deck randomly becomes null, 
this card is going right there in that, right? Like, I mean, there's there's just no way it isn't. Oh boy, I I don't. I will say, Lotus Breach might be one of my least favorite parts of Pioneer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't I know. I don't know if I actually uh, am happy at the idea of it getting better, but uh, that is true. That deck does want to play extra lands and being able to uh, play a land and then play your Lotus Field or your Thespian Stage. That offers a lot of value. And why we haven't seen it as much recently, there were. Uh, times in the past where like mono green ramp decks were a thing which i guess is yeah. could maybe be in the conversation for those as well especially if you have a pretty high land count correct and like even even there's like the like there's the bant decks you know what i mean like the bant mid-range decks like you could still make use of that there so i mean there's a decent amount of things you could do with this uh but i think the up for like obviously the the main deck that this is going into is going to be lotus breach for me and it's just it just looks good there, I, as much as it pains me to say it. <laughs> well, let's move on to number six on our list. And, oh, man, I love this card. This uh, Just discounting power level and everything, Archfiend's Vessel might be one of my just favorite designs from Core Set 2021 in general. The little one one for one that, if you could jump through a bit of a hoop and get it into play from your graveyard, you get a 5-5 five, five flyer for one mana. What uh, what are we doing with this in Pioneer, Grim? I've been running into a lot of Rally the Ancestor decks. And I think mm. this kind of just goes right into that, right? I mean, you you don't care about like you, you you like this going into the graveyard. Matter of fact, you want it to go to the graveyard. You can mill it in with like Stitcher Supplier or something like that. And you just bring it back with like Return to the Ranks or whatever, or 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 Rally the Ancestors, and now you have a five five on top of it. Yeah, I think that is an easy home. I actually like just played uh, Rally and Pioneer. This past weekend for much of brew, I would definitely slot this into it. It seems like a really easy inclusion works with the rally plan. Also a nice little backup plan that you can just like mill it over and do one of your like mini return to the ranks for value and get a five, five or two out of the deal seems powerful. You can recast it with Luris, which seems powerful. And there yep. is some reanimation doesn't see a ton of play, but like uh call the death dweller tiles uh, style stuff. We don't have unearth in pioneer, but those style of effects is another way that you can potentially, uh, get this into play from your graveyard and when you're getting a five five for one ish mana just kind of incidentally from your graveyard that uh that's a powerful effect yeah i mean it's just pretty like it because like sometimes you can just kind of like do the slow bleed kind of game plan uh with the like the sacrifice decks and this just now you can like expedite that clock force them to answer your board and if and then once they do you rally and bring everything back so like just Overall, like this, the rate on this, there's not that, there's a ton of ways to actually cheat this back into play uh, in Pioneer. So I'm not going to be surprised if this becomes a, a an all star in some kind of aristocratic deck. Yeah, uh, I agree. I think it definitely has a, a lot of potential there. Well, let's move on. Number five on our list, staying in the world of black guards, we have Necromentia. And Necromentia, it looks pretty familiar. We've seen Lost Legacies, Unmoored Egos. In my opinion, this is just the best version of that effect that we've seen. Definitely the best version of that effect that we have in the Pioneer format. So, Grim, uh, what do you think about Necromentia? Yeah, like you had mentioned, this is the best version of those type of decks, unmoored, or cards, Unmoored Ego, Lost Legacy, whatever, all of those. Because this thing, first off, you can, you name any card other than a basic land, of course. And then it, they get a 2-2 zombie for each copy that's exiled from their hand. So they only get a zombie if it's in their hand. And on top of that, like we had talked about earlier, like it's much better that the opponent gets a 2-2 zombie than drawing another card. Right? Like, or anything along those lines. So, I'm a huge fan of that. Yeah, especially when you consider that cards like Necromancy and Unmoored Ego and Lost Legacy, they're all cards that you bring in out of your sideboard specifically to nab combo pieces and to fight combo decks. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons that really matters to Pioneer. One is Pioneer has developed into a pretty combo-y meta, where if you look at the top three decks in the format, you got Inverter, combo yep. deck, Lotus Breach, combo yep. deck, and you have Mono White Devotion, which is also kind of a combo deck with the Heliod combo. So a lot of the top tier decks are combo decks. And uh, as you talked about with the zombie, specifically against combo decks, like Demir Inverter, not really going to kill you with combat damage. I guess sometimes you get, like, janked yeah. out by Inverter, but in reality, that doesn't happen to us. Lotus Breach, what, are they going to beat you down with their Fae of Wishes? Like, so giving those decks a 2-2 zombie is almost meaningless, when if you're giving them an extra card, like you would with Unmoored Ego, you could be drawing them into pour-over pages. You could be drawing them into, you know, something that actually is relevant to the game. So I think that Necromancy is going to be a sideboard all-star in Pioneer. 
Definitely. All right, moving on to number four on our list. We have another reprint, another new to Pioneer reprint, and a card that I've been wanting to see added to formats like Pioneer and Modern for a long time. That is Containment Priest. Our hate for things that are coming into play without being cast. Originally targeted reanimation, but actually hits on some other stuff as well now. Krim, what are we uh, fighting and doing with Containment Priest and Pioneer? Well... Containment Priest, as we had mentioned earlier, will be able to stop like the uh, like sacrifice decks, like the Rally the Ancestor decks, um, Coco, like things entering the battlefield like off Coco, and of course Yorion blinking, tons of stuff like that. So there's there's a good amount of stuff where like this card is going to just be a, a hoser, right? Like it, it just stops some key cards from a multiple decks. Yeah, uh, I think you kind of kind of hit on some of the biggest of the bunch. Uh, you have Loris decks that want to cast things from the graveyard. You have Yarion decks that, w- that want to flicker things. Uh, so there are plenty of targets for this. And the nice thing about Containment Priest is a 2-2 flash for two is already a relatively decent spell. It's not great, but it's not uh, flat out embarrassing. So it's a card that you don't mind having in your sideboard. You could even like ambush Viper into <laughs> Snag, some sort of aggressive attacker. Yeah. So I think uh, it's a card that, while I'm not sure how much immediate play it'll see in sideboards in Pioneer, it's one of those cards that it's great to have floating around in the format, because when things get too out of whack with some sort of graveyard deck, if Rally becomes the best deck in the format, then you have this answer sitting around in an easy card that you can slot into, uh, into your deck to fight against the top strategy in the meta. Yeah. What, what, like, I, I would say right now this is just, it, it, the meta isn't, necessarily calling for it yet but once it need it like once it's needed this will probably be like the best sideboard card you could have and i think that's very likely to happen eventually if there's one thing we've learned about older formats uh going back to like modern and legacy the more cards you get the more powerful like graveyard strategies get drag strategies reanimator mm-hmm. strategies so there will be a point where containment priest is saving the day in Pioneer, even if we're not at that point right now, even though I could even see like an argument to maybe playing it right now. Although uh, I don't know. I think I'm more on the fence uh, as to whether I'd play it right now on my sideboard, but there will be a time when this is a really important card. Agreed. Moving on to number three on our list. We have a card that I think might be a very important card right away in Pioneer. Eliminate giving us a cheap instant speed answer to uh creatures and planeswalkers as long as they cost three mana or less so Krim, what are we eliminating in the pioneer format so many things with this like i mean between all the like you know aggro decks and then on top of that being able to double back and be good against like you know the like control decks like three fairy narset uh nissa voice of zendikar for the scales decks stuff like that right like there's there's so many there's so many three mana planeswalkers running around, and this is just great to be able to deal with that while also being able to kill a creature. So just all around solid removal. So so yeah, just looking at the most played creatures in the Pioneer format, you miss out on Yarion, you miss out on Inverter, I guess, but you have Eidolon of the Great Revels, Walking Ballista, Thraben Inspector, Soul Scar Mage, Monastery Swift Sphere, Lurus of the Dream Den, Thassa's Oracle. That's a lot of things eliminate hits. And if you move over to Planeswalkers, among the top 10 most played spells, all spells, not just Planeswalkers, you got Narset Parter of the Veil. So you got yep. Gideon of the Trials. You got yep. Teferi Time Raveler. So this hits something in every deck and that's the thing i love about this card normally uh, a card like eliminate it's a good creature removal spell even without the planeswalker attacks it's fine at killing creatures the problem is you're gonna run into super friends or blue white control and then this is a dead card because you also get to snipe that gideon or teferi or narset it's almost impossible for this to be dead in any matchup outside of maybe like lotus breach like a yeah. dedicated like spell combo deck but outside of that like it's good against creature based aggro decks mid-range decks and also planeswalker control decks which is where you want to be for cards in your main deck in a format like Pioneer. Agreed. Moving on to number two on our list. We have a one of a, the mana cheaty spells. I think there's two of them from Corset 2021. Stormwing <laughs> and Titty. Five mana, three, three, except it costs three mana less to cast if you cast an instant or sorcery. Then you get a big flying prowessy scry two when it comes into play creature. What do you uh, think about this one in Pioneer, Grim? I love this card. I think the fact that it costs one in a blue if you cast another spell is solid. Being able to play this in like a blue red tempo deck or spells matter deck, I think this is great. Like going opt into this, like this, this is absurd, right? Like this just has to be good. 
Like any like any of these mana reduction cards seem insane for Pioneer in older formats because we have tons of cheap spells here, right? Like you can go like Fatal Push on your turn, play this. There's you know what I mean? You can do all of that. You can shock whatever. And it's just you get a 3-3 three, three flying uh, prowess that also scries for two. So just a solid body gets around Fatal Push, which is going to be pretty huge. Gets around Eliminate. Uh, I mean, yes, it does get burnt out, but you know what? That's that's I think that's less burn at your face. So uh, that's great. Yeah, I think uh, I think you pretty much nailed it. I think the rate is good. A three three flying prowess with an enter the battlefield trigger for two mana is already good, and we already have decks that can cast it. While they're not super heavily played yet, there is like a blue red. I guess I would just call it blue red prowess style deck with like swift spear, soul skirmage, sprite dragon, uh, young pyromancer, yep. and then you're just playing a bunch of like crash throughs and ops and wild slashes, any cheap spell you can. And a deck like that, stormy entity is just going to be perfect. When this is coming down for two mana, it is very above the curve. So the fact that it already has some like predetermined homes where this can easily show up and it's just a powerful card on its own if you can cast it for two mana, which you can consistently do in Pioneer because there's so many cheap cantrips. Yeah. Uh, I think that is a recipe for a very good card. Is is there a timeline where like Lotus Breach could also sideboard into this? <laughs> I mean, it, it could if it was worried about maybe, uh, you know, it's combo getting disrupted. They yeah. would get pretty big as you, like, draw through your deck and trigger prowess a bunch. So right. it doesn't seem impossible. Like, yeah, like, because, like, like, I can think about, like, that's the most storm-like deck we have in Pioneer, right? So if it's worried about, like, it's, like, I don't know, maybe all of its, ste- like, spells getting blown up or something like that. Or, or like, I don't know, uh necromentia this this could work right as an alternate win con yeah it uh it actually could surprisingly <laughs> well let's move on number one on our list we mentioned there's not just one but two cards that cheat on mana a bit in corset 2021 number one card for pioneer chandra's incinerator just a casual <laughs> one mana six six trample if you can uh, deal some non-combat damage what do, what do you think about this one grim this card is silly this card is silly <laughs> this this is uh <laughs> This is insane, right? Like, it also has trample on top of that. It has trample. Yeah. So it's not getting chump blocked, and you're not burning this one out unless you're spending two, like, like three damage spells on it. And this isn't really difficult to play for, like, one mana, right? I mean, we can, you can play, like, Wizard's Lightning, Wizard's Lightning into this. If you just have like a one drop wizard, right? Now, now there's a very big incentive to not let the opponent have any wizards or anything on the board. Like this, yeah, it's just great. And like this uh, card is actually very awkwardly hard to kill in Pioneer because Fatal Push doesn't get it. Uh, we yeah. don't have Path to Exile in the Pioneer format. Red Removal doesn't really get it. So there's a decent chance that this is going to stick around. And as you said, it's something as simple as like play a get two lava runner on turn one, uh, do whatever on turn two, turn three, wizard lightning wild slash one mana six six trampler that doesn't die to most removal and you even get this bonus where if you're worried about the race being swung in your opponent's favor you can keep throwing your boros charms let's say at your opponent's face and snipe creatures with them thanks yeah. to the additional ability which that is I, not the reason you're playing the card you're playing the card because it's a one mana six six trample in the decks that you <laughs> will want to run it but that is a nice bonus uh, as well to turn your burn spells that can only go face or your burn spells that you really want to be throwing at your opponent's face if you've ever played burn you sometimes get in these situations where you're like, man, I really need to throw this, you know, Wizard's Lightning at my opponent's face to have a chance of winning, but if I don't deal with this creature, I think uh, they might win the race, I'm not sure, maybe I gotta kill the creature, this lets you have your cake and eat it too in that scenario, where you get to go face and kill the creature, so this card is just, it's a, it's a silly card all around. Exactly, like, being able to go, alright, well, I'm gonna Boros Charm my opponent, and, like, also get to kill a Kalidus, right? Like, that's... (laughs) That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's that's very good. All for uh, what will essentially be a one mana six six, just a bonkers <laughs> bonkers magic card. <laughs> yeah, this has to be the absolute best card. I think. I uh, I mean, in M twenty one for for Pioneer, in my opinion, like this this just seems like it does so much. 
Yeah, I agree. I think this was a, a pretty easy inclusion at number one on my list as well. So anyway, that's our top 10 list. Krim, thanks for hanging out and talking about some Pioneer cards. Thanks for having me, of course. And thanks everyone for watching. So you saw our list of our 10 cards for Pioneer. If you want to see the individual list, check them out on the website. But let us know what you think. What cards are you hyped about for Pioneer from Corset 2021? What do we get right? What do we get wrong? What decks can some of these cards go in? Let us know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.